And I'm glad to say that we have a speaker who will grab and keep your attention. You're about to hear a case study that exemplifies the communities in control movement. Because although we are one big movement in one sense, a movement that believes in vesting power in the grassroots, that means that we're also a series of little movements, believing that each community must shape its own destiny. We wanted to bring you today a taste of one such movement that's symbolised really by the fight against McDonald's in the Dandenong Ranges here in Victoria. The public face of that campaign is Gary Muratore. But he's not alone in that fight. He has an army standing alongside him. Check, check. <laughs> Do you hear the people sing? Singing a song of angry men. <laughs> it is the music of a people who will never just give in. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drum, we will still be standing here when tomorrow comes. Will you join in our crusade? Will you be strong and stand with me? Tear down the golden arch as I restore democracy. So stand with the eight and fight for our right to be free. Do you hear the people sing, singing a song of it is the music of the people who just never will give in When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drum We will still be standing here when tomorrow comes Will you give all you can give so that Tacoma can be free? Stop me, Cat and McDonald's, will you come and stand with me? To fight for our forests, our children, our community. Do you hear the people sing, singing a song of one small town? It is the music of the people who will not be pushed around. You can bully and bulldoze, you can ignore and think you've won. But we'll still be standing here in tomorrow That's kind of how we roll in the Dandenong Ranges. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Father Joe for that introduction. Of course, I want to give a big hand for our community. This is just one of the little things we've done to uh, get the word out there. We flash mobbed uh, a McDonald's at a shopping centre and got, within two weeks, 65,000 views on, on uh, YouTube. So it really put the word out there. So it's part of what we needed to do to get our message out there. I wonder if I can have the graphics up because this is uh, basically going to be a lot of PowerPoint here today. Okay, um, I think in your program it might have mentioned uh, was channeling uh, John Howard and we would make a decision who comes to our community and by what means. That was never the title of the presentation. The title is really The Little Town That Roared and I'm going to take you through the timeline of how we took on a corporate giant. But I want to start by, by saying, what is a protester? Um, as soon as you put the word protest in something, there's connotations, particularly from the media. I think we've seen it last Thursday when they put 
a 15-year-old girl on the front of the Herald Sun, which you know, pre pretty much demonised her. You know, I would say that the, uh, the, the headline for that should have been Hero. Last Tuesday, I road tested this presentation to a group of 75 grade six kids at East Bentley. And they were talking about um, conflict. And as I walked into the classroom, the teacher had put my name up and he put in brackets, protester. Um, so I said to the kids, what's your, what do you think a protester is? And, you know, someone that you know, has a different opinion. And one kid said, someone who breaks the law. Now, that, that, that is concerning. I noticed on, on Facebook, and I'm probably going to embarrass the poor lady because I think she's in the room, um, something was put up the other day by one of our campaigners who just made a comment on social media. And I'll, I'll quote her verbatim. This morning I was listening to Natasha Mitchell's on Radio National Life Matters. It was about protest and I felt compelled to write. Dear Natasha, I'm very interested in your Life Matters today. I'm part of a protest group protesting about McDonald's outlet in Tacoma in the Dandenong Ranges, which is just outside of Melbourne. Our protest is long. It started back in October 2011 with an application by McDonald's to build. And about a year later, we made a community garden. The McDonald's has now been built. Two viable businesses were destroyed, old and important, but not heritage listed, and they were just knocked down. Our council received over a thousand objections to the proposed outlet, and they rejected the application at a council meeting. McDonald's went to VCAT, and two people approved the application. Exclamation mark. Democracy? Question mark, question mark. We are still here, and we have an enormous amount of positive feedback from the local community and the media. We have a change.org petition with 105,000 signatures from around the world and our, our spokespeople went to Chicago with the petition after a successful crowdfunding. This protest has galvanised the community and many people who would not normally protest have marched and stood in the wind and rain to make a point about community and democracy and, and the belief to speak out against what we believe is wrong. There are some who are supportive of McDonald's, but the majority of locals in Tacoma, in fact, nine out of 10 people, oppose it. My quote of the day is, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke, 1729 to 1797. You can look for us in more details. It's actually very interesting and somewhat sad on burgeroff.org or our Facebook page. I think protest in the light of the current po political situation is of extreme importance and it could be expanded from today into another program. Well, I could talk about protests again. Again, I basically said, you know, I think the mainstream media often demonises protests. So that's a little bit about my community. You've seen them come up and seen the, the clever and interesting ways. As I mentioned before, I spoke to a primary school last week and they had their version of what a protest is. And during this campaign, we had an opportunity to sit down with um, a detective commissioner of police. Because last August, Victoria Police turned out 90 public order response officers, the old riot squad. They were weaponised and they faced off against the community you've seen here today. 90 riot police. The very next day, they raided a bikey compound in Bayswater to get automatic weapons and they did it with 12 police. Now, when we said to this deputy commissioner, why did you do that? I'm not going to embarrass by saying who he was, but I will say what he said. He said, well, we had intelligence your group was infiltrated by Occupy Melbourne. <laughs> and our face just dropped. We said, their mums, their dads, their kids, Occupy Melbourne? I said, what intelligence? Wait for it. I listened to 3AW. Your taxes at work. And I've mentioned before the Herald Sun doing the best to demonise protests. So, a little bit about McDo no McDonald's in Tacoma. We're a grassroots campaign. It's all local input. So we haven't got the renter crowd that the demonisers often say, oh, they're just renter crowd, they haven't got jobs. Now, often we find it hard to get people on the picket because we've got jobs. That's one of the problems. We've got a huge membership, 105,000 people have signed our signature on change.org. That's the second biggest um, petition that change.org has ever done in Australia. 
So that's quite a feather in our cap, I believe. 22,000 on our Facebook page, and we treat that almost like a magazine. So we've, we use a lot of uh, outgoing communication that. 2,300 on a Facebook group, and they tend to be the people we talk about off the hill and on the hill. The 2,300 are on the hill up in the Dandenongs, and they're basically our campaigners. So when we put out a SMS call that we need people on site, they're our go-to people. And about 100 senior activists. Now, we haven't got a structure as such. When I say senior activists, these are people that we can rely on to guide others. So there are photographers, videographers, there's documentary film people following us around, there's artists, there's musicians, there's knitters. There's, as, you, as I go through this, you'll see that what we've got is a community. And that's what this is about. Our beef, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about why we didn't want it. It can be summed up very, very quickly. Too close to a primary school, it's only 150 metres away, too close to a kindergarten. It will be the closest McDonald's to a national park anywhere in Australia. It's only 800 metres from a national park. It's being built on a strip of road that currently is not 24-7, so it'll go 24-7. It's six times bigger than any other shop in the same street. It will create traffic problems. It will create litter problems. And for that reason, our council has received just under 1,200 objections. The council did the right thing. They weighed it up. They had a special meeting. They had to hold it in a reception centre. And the council voted against the project 9-0. McDonald's then went and spent $900,000 at VCAT and got the democratically elected council's decision overturned. McDonald's then started somewhat of a PR campaign, I would say a ham-fisted ca PR campaign, claiming that they had strong local support and that they had consulted with the community. Well, two things there, they had no local support and they had not consulted with the community. So. I come from a, a PR and marketing background and, and I said to anybody I could talk to at the time, if we let them get away with that, if we let them keep saying that, that will become fact and people will believe it. So we have to change the narrative. So our challenge was to keep it out of the courts. That was one of the things. McDonald's love to take people to court and you'll see a bit more about that later on. We have found out since this campaign was running in the last five years They've gone to courts and planning tribunals around Australia 45 times in an attempt to overturn council decisions. So they don't care what the council says. They know that they can go to a higher court and if they do the right thing, they can probably get it overturned. So we were looking at appealing the VCAT decision. We, we heard anywhere from 400,000 to 1.4 million it could have been. We didn't have that sort of money. It wasn't fair on the council. And there was interesting um, differing opinions on how we would appeal it. If we uh, had have lost, we would be up for all the McDonald's costs. And if we had have won, all it was going to do is refer it back to VCAT and two years down the track we'd be doing the same thing again. So we decided to move it to the court of public opinion. We spoke to a leading paediatrician in um, Port Macquarie in New South Wales who led a campaign against McDonald's up there happens to have the name of Dr. David McDonald, spelled exactly the same way. <laughs> Dr. McDonald said, these people hate bad PR. So get it out there, do things that they're not going to enjoy and they're not going to be comfortable with. So we also at that time, we're getting the, we're unemployed, uh, we're all hippies up there, we're all vegans, um, you know, you hate progress, all this sort of stuff. So we had to change that narrative. So. As I said, we're a broad church. You've seen my community here today. And we needed to stay on message. And that message was that, you know, the community did not want this. VCAT result, as I mentioned before, was found in favour of McDonald's. And we could spend hours talking about point by point how they, we, we put things in front of them, they, they answered, etc. The timing was problematic because once the VCAT decision was handed down, was actually at the time of council election. So our council was in caretaker mode and they couldn't make a decision even to appeal it. So it was a real, real issue. And as I mentioned before, we didn't want to go to the Supreme Court because of the costs. So we had to come up with a better way. And we felt that we had to show that we were first and foremost community-based, that we were clever, that we were professional, peaceful, 
branded. Now, the reason I put branded into the presentation is we were going to fight fire with fire. McDonald's is a billion dollar corporation that look at their brand and look at the way they do things and they're very, very mindful of their brand. We, on the other hand, had to be extremely mindful of our brand. And I'd say to people that when we're talking to the media, when we're out there in the community talking to others, there were three things, three golden rules. Stay on message, stay on message, stay on message. If we could do that, we could possibly beat them. We also had to punch above our weight. No one, particularly Australians, Australians don't like losers. As soon as they can sniff that you're probably going to lose, they'll jump off you. So we had to come up, come up with ways that looked like we were beating them all the time. So as I say, punch above our weight. I had to explain that to, to year sixes the other day. They hadn't heard of it. I said like that. So yeah, punching above your weight is. So one of the first things we did, once the VCAT decision was handed down, before they started any demolition of the site, this was really cool. 500 people turned up on a Sunday and they planted a community garden in the block next door. It was fantastic. People donated plants. We had building supplies, donated um, soil, etc. It showed off our community spirit and resolve. We occupied that site 24-7 for six weeks and eventually 22 police came at 7 o'clock in the morning and removed one lone protester. How McDonald's can pick up the phone and get 22 police, I still don't know. Um, and it gave us high media visibility. A couple of times Channel 7 News crossed to it and we realised that people were starting to take an interest in it. So I mentioned before about the branding. So from that point, at the community garden, we started to break up into subgroups. So we had an arts group, a singing group, a lobby group, a PR group, a marketing group, and we started to bring all the skills from our community into a focus to take them on. So we treated the campaign as a product. We came up with logos, typefaces, we created a website, some clever Facebook pages, started Twitter accounts, and started to come up with rules of how our media and communication would be outgoing. Um, some of the images you see there were um, posters that we put up advertising a rally that we put, and we put them all up. If you go up through Upway, we put them all up the Mad Mile. So for a week and a half, there were these posters, and people knew, driving the Dandenong, that something big was happening. We also needed to build a message. McDonald's were running with, it's just a vocal minority don't want this, the vast majority of people want it. I can quote that in my sleep. The lady that said that is Sky Oxingham. She's their PR manager. So we were bumping into people that said, no one rang me for an opinion. We contacted McDonald's. At this stage, we were still sort of talking to them. And we said, how did you come up with vast majority? Oh, we did a survey. Oh, would you share that survey with us? Um, yeah, mate. Why didn't you put that survey to VCAT? Stony silence. So we don't know if they ever really did take a survey. So we decided that we would have to do a survey and we didn't want to poll 100 people. We actually took us six weeks. We knocked on every door of every house in Tacoma. We asked them a simple question. Do you want the McDonald's built in Tacoma? Yes or no? Now, if they weren't home, we made three attempts to go back. So we basically covered, I think, of the houses, 95%. So it was a great, you know, straw poll, not straw poll, it was a great section of the community. And we found out that 92.8% of people said no. More people were undecided than what people were saying yes. And the people that were saying yes tended to be the older ones that said, oh, it'd be great, I'll be able to get, my grandkids will be able to get jobs. Now, the people of, of, of the... 2,200, I think the, uh, I think it works out, 38 people said yes, they would get it. So it was, it, was, it was nobody. So we finally had a message. Nine out of ten said no. And what was interesting at the survey when we were knocking on the door, a couple of things happened. It validated our position. We were hoping that we would get 60, 70 percent, but we were in the 90s, so that was just amazing. It obtained our first major messaging point that nine out of 10 people said no, and we kept on hammering that home that had to become the narrative. People were prepared to give us money. We'd be knocking on the door saying, do you want a McDonald's bill? And they would put their hands in their pockets and put $100 notes and say, go and fight the bastards. So we knew that we tapped 
a nerve in the community. And they ask us, when are you going to do a march? When are you going to do a rally? At this stage, we hadn't even considered that. So we thought about maybe doing a march on this, what happened to be the 2nd of March last year. And if we get a couple of hundred people, it would look great. We'd you know, put them out the front of the cameo in Belgrave, walk down to about a kilometre down to uh, Tacoma, and that would be a really good image. We'd be able to get some uh, pictures for the local papers and it would show that we're strong. We'd, at this stage, we decided we needed the shirts that you see here. So one of our campaigners contacted a T-shirt manufacturer and he said, look, I'll give you some. How many do you want? And she said, oh, look, you know, 40 or 50 would be great. And he said, no, no, I'll give you 1,000. So all of a sudden we had T-shirts to sell which could start to fund this campaign. So on a very sunny morning in Belgrave, 3,000 people turned up. We were hoping for three or 400, 3,000. We blocked Burwood Highway. The police didn't know what to do. They had no traffic control in place. Even though we were ringing the police the week before saying this is going to be big, uh, and hoping that we would get you know a few hundred. It was the largest community gathering ever in the Dandenong Ranges. More people turned out than to see Princess Di and Charles when they came through in, after the Ash Wednesday file. So I'd like to say that we bumped Charlie off the, <laughs> out of the history books. It galvanised our support base and we finally had some real media dynamite. People were taking us seriously. We also realised that we had to start to show ourselves on YouTube very professionally and not just handheld videos shot by people on the cameras. We needed to get someone involved. I'm pleased to say we've got documentary filmmaker Tim Smith. He's up there today. He's been following us around. He produced some of the... Give him a wave, Tim. He did a lot of the work for us. And this is one of the first he did um, about the march. They can't silence me, no, they can't buy my voice. So come with me, I'll show you a way to feel better about a brand new day. Just raise your voice up loud and proud and shout. We, we, we will not stand for no, we will stand and fight you Big business with big wallets They'll try to silence you But they can't silence you, no They can't buy your voice This local community has taken every opportunity we've been given to tell the McDonald's Corporation that they are not wanted so raise your voice up loud and proud and shout We, we, we will not stand for this, no We will stand and fight you We, we, so we will not stand for this what McDonald's needs to understand is this. We are the locals. We are not going anywhere. And they are the ones which will leave this town. Watch it grow. Watch it grow in our communities. People visit the hills precisely because it is not another suburb of Melbourne. The beauty of the Dandenongs is because it's different. That's why we choose to live here, and that's why tens of thousands of people choose to visit here. If there's a McDonald's franchise here in Tacoma, there is nothing to stop a Hungry Jacks in Callista. There is nothing to stop a KFC in Monbog. There is nothing to stop a pizza hut in Alinda? Is that what we want? Nine out of ten people who live in Tacoma say they do not want a McDonald's.
McDonald's and it's a message to the Bayou government Minister Guy. Minister Guy said that the weight of public opinion, the weight of objections should be taken into account in BCAT decisions. They can't silence you, no They can't buy your voice yeah, I think That's some of Tim Smith's beautiful work. Well, I mentioned before about me Media Dynamite, if I can get the thing, um, CNN picked it up and they wrote a story and they put it on their website and then they tweeted it and I got a call on Easter Saturday morning by some of the ladies in the campaign that says it's starting to trend on Twitter. And as the sun come up around the world, we've seen the CNN story getting first um, uh, as it come up in Europe and then as it moved over to the States. And I think we worked out that it was translated into something like 25 different languages and 10.5 million people seen our story, which led to other media organisations wanting to talk to us. So we had the BBC, we had now the Australians talking to us. This was big, it just went off. And the interest was huge. Um, newspapers, we got two supportive editorials from the Herald Sun. Now you didn't, not misheard me then, two supportive editorials from the Herald Sun who said that McDonald's should listen to the community and go away. So I just thought that was amaz amazing. Um, we even got a cartoon, which I'll show you in a minute, on a Saturday. So, you know, a, a supportive cartoon in the Herald Sun. Uh, front page of the age, we did all the television shows, they're all listed there. We were interviewed on almost every talkback radio program around the country, and we, as well as that, we did heaps of community and internet radio. And if they give away a tip for a campaign, please treat the community uh, radio stations as you would mainstream media. They are great. What these people have done for us is they've done interviews, they've provided content back which we could put on our social media pages. They've been the engine room to getting our, our message out. So it's not just the Fairfaxes and the News Limiteds and the Sky News, etc. It's these smaller ones that can be important as well. So very well done for them. And there's the cartoon I spoke about, so you know, that was great. We've had a few. First Dog on the Moon did one recently with uh, police with McDonald's logos on their hats. I thought that was quite a nice one as well. <laughs> so we quickly realised that media was key to getting the message out there. So we started to build a media database. We started to cultivate media relationships. We made sure they were on our speed dials, that we had them in our database of email addresses. We created a look and feel. So when a press release went out, they knew it was from us, that wasn't, you know, 14 fonts on it and you know, sent 12 times a day from different email addresses. It had to look like it was, you know, corporate. And we aimed for organic media. What I mean by that is, um, very early in this campaign, um, I somehow got on an email list from the people from the uh, East West Tunnel. And I remember one day I got six press releases from six different mailboxes, it was almost like spam. And I thought if journalists are seeing this, they're just gonna just throw it away. So we actually put very little media out. We create events and try to get people to come and talk to us and get an organic feel and it seems to work really well. So with that being said, we had to look for stunts and I'll come back to some of the stunts like what you've seen before, a flash mob. Now with the rally, and the media and people t starting to take interest, we actually claimed our first scalp in the campaign. And the franchisee that was on the 7.30 report claiming that they was going to be running Tacoma backed out. So all of a sudden McDonald's didn't have a franchisee and they quickly announced another one and they rang one of our campaigners and they said, oh, that mediation that you've been wanting to talk, yeah, we'd be happy to come and talk to you. So six of us went in, it was like, organising the Arab and uh, Israeli peace talks. Um, it was different. I'm not going to go into what was at the mediation, but two things came out of it. That McDonald's promised that they would um, give us their findings. 
So they were going to give us the survey, so that was a win for us. And that they said that they would organise or ask that Katrina Noble, their CEO, would come out and meet with our elected representatives. Now, what that meant was we were going to set up a meeting with uh, our council, our state member and our federal, me federal member who had all had agreed. So there were the two things McDonald's had agreed in mediation. They didn't do any of it. That was basically the last time they picked up the phone to us, except to sue us. So we, let's get, I'm going to go off the timeline for a minute and talk about a little bit about some of the, and it's probably a strong word, stunts, but some of the things we did to create interest. Um, so if we did stunts, we had, they had to be relevant, uh, create interest, try to get the mainstream media involved, be funny or quirky and look clever. So that's my next door neighbour. Uh, she said, she talked to one of the ladies at the school and she said, what if we had bin stickers? And someone went out and researched bin stickers and we made them available online. People could buy them and they started putting them in their bins. So that was one, and, and of course the local papers picked that up and it was in the local papers. We, and this is not in order, for the campaign people here I am diverting from the timeline, um, we had a CD. It was really cool. Um, it was, so you heard one of the tracks there before, and we sold that CD and we sent that CD out to radio stations. Neil Mitchell played tracks from that CD one morning. So you know, it was getting interest. This is one of my favourites. We created a, a placemat and we put it up on our website and through the change.org database asked people to download it, print it and walk it into a McDonald's store and send us back. Now we just thought, oh that'll, that's cool, it's more to, if McDonald's seen it, aren't they going to be pissed off? Um, sorry my language. Five and a half thousand of those were downloaded in ten hours. Our, our um, website uh, guy rang us up and said, there's something wrong, it keeps crashing. It was because people were trying to download this. And we asked people to send us email, uh, send us emails with pictures. So we were getting emails from Cairns, Alice Springs, Perth, of people that were putting them. In fact, one lady said in Alice Springs, she walked in, she asked for the manager and said, these are for you. <laughs> and she watched the manager putting them all out. <laughs> so you've got to be quirky. Um, we got a great team, and there's some of them here today, our picket knitters. Wave your hands, picket knitters. There they are. Um, local media love this. That was there. We got well, there. We've even getting squares sent from Portugal, the UK, USA, adding to a knitted banner that we're putting up. And one of the things that I would be shot if I didn't mention up here was our gnomes. And you've seen some of the gnomes here today. We, were, we would take these gnomes and we would put them on bus stops. We'd put them out the front of McDonald's stores. We had Gnomageddon one day where we, we ringed uh, McDonald's headquarters in Melbourne uh, and it made the front of the Ages website and it made the Channel 10 News that night. And we even recently got our community to dress up as gnomes trying to break a world gnome record, and there is such thing. Um, 478, where's head gnome? She around? Wave to me. Was it 478? Was the. Uh, she's up the back there. Um, we managed to get 446 or 450 thereabouts, so it was really great. It was a really windy, cold day. But it was so nice to stand in front of that many gnomes and say, you know, there is a hundred times more people sitting here than in that McDonald's store down the road. <laughs> so, you know, that's great. Um, so we'll do that again next year to try to break that record. Um, so back to the timeline, McDonald's now knew they had a lot of um, negative PR. They turned their spin up to 11 and we heard them say some classic things on radio. What we were complaining about were they were going to allow the community to use the car park. So that was their gift to Tacoma, have a car park. Um, they still claimed the support and now they introduced a new franchisee, a guy called um, James Curry, and they said, he's a local. Well, when we asked where he was from, he's from the other side of the hill, so people in the Dandenongs know that's not local. <laughs> and we pointed out that his house was actually closer to Box Hill than it was Tacoma. So if he's in Box Hill, does he claim himself as a local there? So they were just tripping up all the time on these sort of things. And they started to talk about jobs. 
that like, I mean, when McDonald's talk about jobs, they want to give the impression that they're basically replacing a General Holden, General Motors Holden manufacturing job with a job, when the actual job can be four hours a week for a kid making seven or eight bucks an hour. That's what jobs are. 90% of what they employ are kids because they are the cheapest form of legal labour in Australia. So there's very few full-time jobs created by one of these stores when it goes in. So it wasn't working very well for them and in an attempt to stop the protest, to shut us down, they started to put 24-7 security on the site, um, rumoured to be costing $55,000 a week and they kept that up for the best part of 12 months. They put out press releases, again, that we were a vocal minority and the vast majority welcomed it, which we knew was wrong and we were gaining on that. Uh, they employed a private detective to spy on campaign people. Now, that's not an exaggeration. I actually read that in Crikey when the private detective left his notes in the front seat of his car and one of the campaign photographed it and there was a list of our names and what we'd been doing and they'd been following us around. So this corporation will stoop to getting PIs to shut down a legal and peaceful protest. And then they erected a 2.5 metre wall around the, the site, which we found out later was illegal because one day in a storm it blew over. So, you know, lucky no one was there. But what this wall gave us was something that's great. Gave us Australia's <laughs> biggest... <laughs> so people would go up there and they'd do these wonderful chalkings and at night, McDonald's security would come out and they would wash them off. And the next morning, they would be back. And this just went on for month after month. And in the end, they actually uh, sent us letters and put letters up saying that we would be charged if we chalked. And one of the ladies got up there one day, and when they roughed them off in the morning, there's the chalk residue there, she got up with a sponge and she started writing, no McDonald's in the water, <laughs> like that. Charge me. Um, that... Chalk background there was a great thing to, for humanising our campaign and that's what we needed to do. We needed to sort of tell people that we are locals and why we needed to do this. And that's when we put this... Oh, I'm doing it backwards here, here we go. Another one of Tim's fantastic videos. Because this place is special. Because communities should have the right to say no. Because it's near a school. Because it's about the greater moral issues, not the law. Because nine out of ten said no to McDonald's in Tacoma. Because we have the best cafes and restaurants up here in all of Victoria, and McDonald's just does not fit. Because this is my home. Because it's across because from our school. school. Because I said no. Because we love our hills just the way they are. Because I love my children. Because this is about democracy. I moved house because of McDonald's. Because I don't want to see a McDonald's from my front veranda. Because the council have voted no. Because, because the, the hills are special. Because of the adverse health effects on my community. Because this is the Dandenong Ranges and we need to protect this national park. Because it's personal. Because we already have jobs. Because the gnomes said no. Because I believe in a rightful democratic process. Because I care about Sherbrooke Forest. Just because. So, so that led to, thank you. So that led to our change.org petition just climbing. It was uh, in June of last year around about 10,000 and by the end of July it was up at 65,000. Um, and we tried to hand that over to McDonald's CEO in Sydney, Katrina Noble, and McDonald's actually locked the door and they sent the receptionist out and we got that on the ABC News. So again, they, they called another own goal. They're not very good at that PR stuff. And I said to fellow campaigners, I said I felt that when the demolition was to came, come and we were going to actually stand in front of the bulldozers, we were probably going to be in the news cycle for 24 hours. We stayed in the news cycle for 27 days. 
during July. It was just amazing. They just followed us. We did breakfast television from there. We're doing radio reports from there. We had community meetings there. To, we found out who was going to de demolish the building and we made pleas to them and we know that two demolition companies backed off. They felt, they listened to the community and they said we wouldn't do it. McDonald's then went to the uh, demolition company of last resort, um, a non-union contractor and we had unions supporting us at this stage as well. Um, and they went to, uh, went to go in and do it and we basically, or some people in the campaign then took a decision to break the law and they occupied the site by climbing on the roof. Now it was non-violent, it was peaceful, but we were trespassing. That's one of the protesters on the roof there and that's the police acting. So again it became a media bonanza, the started climbing and climbing and climbing and we were getting a lot of, I guess you say the momentum was with us and then McDonald's had other ideas and on Wednesday the 17th of July they launched Supreme Court writ actions against eight protesters. Uh, picked at random, uh, some of them had been on the roof, some of them hadn't. One lady had just simply held on to a portaloo truck like that. And she was a 67 year old grandmother and they went them for uh, loss of profits, the um, cost of security. This would have ended up seven figures and could have possibly taken their houses. They became known as the, T uh, the T8. They served the writs at eight o'clock on a Wednesday night expecting us to be in court fully represented at 10 o'clock the next morning, which was impossible. We rang around and fortunately the good people from Morris Blackburn eventually defended us. So if anybody from Murray B's here, thank you very much. The community really appreciates that. I wasn't one of the people on the Ritz, but I went in that day and at probably the lowest point of the campaign for me when I seen the uh, Norton Rose solicitors. I think they had a QC, two barristers, half a dozen solicitors, and they were bringing in trolley load after trolley load of our Facebook posts, of photos that were taken by private detectives. They had been setting this up, and what they wanted was a representation order. They wanted to get an order against these people and say that it applied to the entire community. And the judge said, what you're asking me to do is shut down free speech. And that's exactly what McDonald's was trying to do. At this point, we still had people on the roof. And as I mentioned earlier, a week later at 4.30 in the morning, 90 public order response officers, weaponized, come down the Burwood Highway, hut, 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 standing off against about 20 of us. I think for the Victorian Police Force, it would be probably one of their most embarrassing points in history uh, to do that. And we still have not got an answer how do you get 90 riot squad police to protect a McDonald's organisation? The police still are yet to answer that. So they removed a 22-year-old protester from the roof. She was later charged with trespass and I think she got a, basically a fine of about $200. So, you know, your taxpayers' money did that. It was our lowest point. So under police guard, the demolition went ahead. Court action meant that they actually put an exclusion zone around the site, so it made um, protesting on the site problematic. But our signatures kept going up on, on change.org and they were heading towards 100,000 and we felt that we needed to do something big and the change.org people called me one day and they said, they wouldn't accept the petition in Australia, why don't you go to America and give it to them? And we said, we haven't got any money, we just, you know, we're, we're worried about the fines, we're in this stage we're in court, we really didn't know where we were going to go. And they said, why don't you crowdfund it? And on the back of a, a napkin in a coffee shop in um, Queen Street, we worked out that if we get one person over there for two nights accommodation with an airfare, we'd probably need about $3,000. We worked out, we actually looked up when their board would be there and we worked out we needed 17 days to raise $3,000 so we'd give it a go. So if we got there, we would deliver the, um, the petition we would hopefully get a little bit of media. We would send a message to the shareholders, the board members and the stakeholders and hopefully build a bit of support from international activist organisations. So keep in mind our aim, 
$3,000, 17 days. We pushed the button on an Indiegogo crowdfunding platform and the guy at change.org gave me a call after 55 minutes and said, you've hit the target. <laughs> and I thought he was just having a go. I said, no, no, come on. He said, no, you've hit the target. And the money just kept coming in. And like we were watching the tweets from the CNN, we started watching the numbers go up, you know, through 5,000, through 10,000. And eventually we got over $40,000. So, and that was just from people all over Australia and with usually the comment, fight them. So because that money was being donated to going to Chicago, we decided that we would have to use it all for Chicago. So instead of sending one person, we sent four. We, part of that was to send a documentary filmmaker which gave us the ability to send high resolution video back to Australia. And we decided we would do a week's worth of stunts in the States. Now we had no contact with the media in America. We could have got there, made an appointment, handed our petition over, and that would have been the end of it. So we had to think on the ground. Um, as I say, our goals were to hand the petition over, place a large ad in the Chicago Tribune, the second biggest newspaper in America, um, and try to run two independent media campaigns, the Australian domestic one, which we thought would be pretty easy because they would be interested in Australians going overseas, that's news. Um, we had no idea what the Americans and the internationals would, would, would do. So driving out to the airport, I seen my first positive omen. That was in the car park at Melbourne Airport when I'm getting on the plane. I had the 7.30 report filming me getting out of the taxi and that was in the car in front of me. So I thought, that's a positive omen. <laughs> and when we arrived in Chicago, we looked out the hotel room and saw this. Going, going, gone. <laughs> so it was getting better. And then we took a walk down to um, one of the biggest McDonald's stores in Chicago. It's called Rock and Roll uh, McDonald's. What McDonald's do is they acquire people's culture. They're a bit like a parasite. So they're right next to the Rock and Roll um, restaurant and they call it Rock and Roll McDonald's. If you come up to the Tacoma one, it's full of Puff and Billy memorabilia like that. So they, they acquire people's culture. So we walked up to the Rock and Roll McDonald's and we seen this. And we didn't put it there. And we found out there were expat Australians that had been following us and they come down to meet us to help us out. So there's the team. We basically had to put together people that could think on their feet, talk to media. We had Tim there to send the video back, which became crucial. Most of the stuff, if you followed us when we were over there, most of the stuff that was sent back to the 7.30 report and the news thing was shot by Tim, uploaded. We worked 24-7. Um, we had to do a little bit of secret squirrel stuff because our legal people were telling us that McDonald's would be likely to go and basically say to uh, American uh, immigration that we were there to break laws, which technically, um, you know, people from overseas protesting is deemed not technically legal. Um, we weren't going to break any laws, so we had to go on different planes. I went to a trade show for my work, got there early. And we didn't want McDonald's to find out we were coming so they could do a preemptive strike to shut us down. So I got there the Wednesday before we were going to hand it over. I placed the ad, which was that, a full page in the Chicago Tribune. It was on page 15 with their international news, so it was a great um, position. It was black and white for impact and to save a little bit of money for the campaign. It was seen by 470,000 people and the phone just rang off the hook. Um, the very next day, we got coverage in the Chicago Tribune, and this was on a Friday. My other colleagues were coming in over the weekend. We shot some video footage for Australia over the weekend. And we decided that for the Americans, we better do a stunt on the Monday morning. And it was our plan for the Wednesday to hand over the petition. Now, I had phoned McDonald's well ahead and said, I'm the guy that put the ad in the paper. Uh, they weren't very pleased about that. Um, I said, we'd like to come in next Wednesday and give you um, a petition. They said, that's fine, you can just mail it to us. Um, we said, no, 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 um, we've come halfway around the world, we'd like to give it to you in person. Oh, there's no guarantee there'll be anybody here, so we got all this thing. We found out from the media later, the media contacted them and said, have you had any contact from the Australians? I said, what Australians? So, you know, they were quite prepared to you know, lie again. So our first media stunt, and I literally picked up uh, the two girls from the airport, they were jet lagged. We called it Kangageddon, Americans love kangaroos. So we inflated 
um, 50 or so uh, inflatable kangaroos and put them out the front of the rock and roll McDonald's. McDonald's security come out and told us uh, we would be moved on if we went inside. We said we're not planning to go inside. They said, well, we'll be calling the police because you can't be doing this on the footpath. Um, big squad car comes, comes down. Huge big sergeant of Chicago police comes out, said, what are you doing? We're setting up blow-up kangaroos. Knock yourself out, guys. <laughs> um, and inflate them and we will come. We had media from all over the place. Um, and luckily, we had some ECPATS Australians there. They jumped in and did the media interviews as well because we couldn't keep up. And it just kept going. And then we had the papers, uh, Sun Times, Chicago Tribune. We were on the nightly news. That's just some of them that came down. And we were, we were sort of getting calls from radio stations to come in and do radio interviews, etc. And the Australian media got on board. We did the 7.30 report. Um, today, Sunrise, we went to 3AW, Red Simon, John Fain, The Project. I did um, Drive with some New Zealand show. And we kept on coming back to this little studio in the John Hancock building about 50 floors up. All the networks use the same studio, so you do green screen. And this is a bit of a joke by the Americans at 2 o'clock in the morning. They gave me an Emmy for the most amount of crosses to Australia in a 24-hour period. <laughs> um, wish I could have kept it. Um, so we now had some interest from the Americans. They were following us around. We'd swap business cards. They promised they'd come out and see the petition handover. So off we went out to <coughs> McDonald's headquarters to aim to shame them. We printed out pictures to humanise our community. So we were going to set the pictures up. Again, McDonald's security came out. Same line. If you go inside, you won't be allowed. Uh, we're just going to set up out here. You can't do that. We've called the police. The police came down. They seen what they were doing. Have a nice day. Where you're from in Australia? Like to go there one day. Um, so it was great. Where the police just treated us fantastically, and we had ourselves and our helpers setting these up. So you can see right down the uh, street out the side front of the headquarters. We set that up, and then. There were satellite vans hidden behind some bushes so that McDonald's couldn't see us. And when they said that we couldn't come across, right on cue, we walked out with the petition and we walked across with the satellite, or sorry, with the uh, media behind us and they couldn't stop us. So there's some of the pictures of our community up and down the freeway there. And of course, we got the same people to cover it again. And we did breakfast television and we went on the Jonathan Brandmeier program. Um, think of that with Alan Jones, but with intelligence. Um, <laughs> he was really funny. Though. He promised to put the girls on for, I think he said we'd do 7 to 12 minutes, and they stayed on for 34 minutes. So it was great. And that, that's, that's, he's got an audience of uh, 2.5 million in Chicago. So that was great. And um, Tim put together something we could send back to the people that had crowdfunded on Indiegogo, we wanted to give them a wrap of what we're doing. This kind of encapsulates what happened in Chicago. So another one of Tim's wonderful videos. I like this one. You can dance to it. Here we are in Chicago. Thanks to the generosity of people across Australia who chipped into our crowdfunding on Indiegogo, we're going to be delivering a petition to the CEO of McDonald's later in the week. There's uh, Australians in the house. Uh, you have seen these guys around town, <laughs> apparently. Sorry, McDonald's, you're not welcome. You read the papers today? These are activists who do not want a McDonald's in Tacoma, Australia. Okay. What we're doing at the moment, we're uh, inflating about 30 uh, plastic marsupials, kangaroos, and we're going to uh, sit them out the front of the uh, rock and roll McDonald's there. So we've got television um, and newspapers coming down, so hopefully this is all going to be in tomorrow's newspaper or tonight's news. The protesters from Australia is bringing a food fight to Chicago because they do not want a McDonald's in their small town. Tomorrow the group hopes to deliver 100,000 petition signatures to McDonald's headquarters in Oakbrook. They're carrying signs with these giant uh, kangaroos. We voted no to McDonald's in Tacoma, but they've come all the way here. Let's, that's a... Uh... That's a commitment, if you ask me. Really. Um, I actually heard about your cause while I was at work this morning, and I just took interest in the uh, T-shirts you guys were wearing. 
and they're looking for uh, signatures to present to the Oak uh, Brook based uh, McDonald's, of course. And the council said no, this is the wrong type of development for that. Thank you. You do realise that your corporation is suing our community? You should really read those comments too. They are all comments from people who do not want you in our community. Thank you. Thank you. They're heavy, aren't they? We've taken full page out of the Chicago Tribune telling McDonald's that they're not welcome and not wanted in Tacoma. This has led to the American media talking to us. We're talking to CBS, ABC, Fox. We're on the Mike McConnell show, the Talk Back Radio here on Tuesday. Um, and we're getting the message across that McDonald's can't bully their way into our community. Just coming up 25 to 2 in the morning. You know, we've been here all day running this uh, small hotel room as a media centre for the campaign. Send the word, stop. You can Twitter that to them, you can email that to them, you can even write it on a piece, piece of paper and take it into a store. Be respectable and let Tacoma have their life. Let them have their town. We don't want McDonald's there, so don't go there. Thank you. This is from a Chicago citizen. Okay. Please. McDonald's headquarters down the street. Stay out of there. Respect the people. Thank you. He was fantastic. He just seen us in the shirts and said, what are we doing? We explained it. Seen the camera there and he said, can I talk to the camera? And we got that in one take. <laughs> I don't know what he does for a living. We didn't even get his name. He was terrific. So what Chicago did, we, we got our goals. It meant that the media was still interested. Um, we got told by a New York PR firm that that investment of 40000 probably netted us somewhere between 3 and $5 million worth of PR. Don't know how they worked that out, but I'm going to take that number. So, um, and guess what? McDonald's dropped the lawsuits. Well, they agreed to mediate. <laughs> so, the mediation went ahead later. Julian Burnside, you might have heard of that up and coming young, up and coming young fellow. He agreed to mediate. McDonald's had booked a mediation centre for two hours, and I think he kept them in there for ten. Um, and we got everything. They dropped the costs against us. They agreed that we could go back on the footpath and protest and that we had the right to legally and peacefully protest. Uh, so that was great. It was, a, it was a huge win. However, McDonald's security continued to intimidate us on site. They would say that we couldn't be there due to the Supreme Court rules, etc. They continued to photograph us and to this day, if we walk up there, they still photograph us. They still have security on site. And the McDonald's builder got a little bit creative. Um, when we were in VCAT, there were strict rules about how this store is to be built. And one of them was the height of the thing that they put the big yellow um, M on, which they called the blade. And it had to be six metres. And that went up. Oh, by the way, the Love McDonald's was put by one of the builders there just to have a go at us. Um, so on this side there, you'll see what they attempted. And we got a, a clinometer a laser device and we measured it and realised it was two metres higher than what it was supposed to. We rang the council and they had to bring a team in and cut it down. So they were quite prepared to break VCAT laws. So this is not a cute company. They will do what they need to do. And they would have argued later they didn't know it. And in fact, when we asked them about that, they've said, oh, builders always build higher and then cut down later. <laughs> no, no, with, with, with wires and metal, I mean, it took them four hours to cut it down to where it was. So that was another thing. Unfortunately, the store finally opened in April. And a lot of people say, well, you've lost. But we really see that the opening of the Tacoma store was just one battle. Our campaign is no McDonald's and the Danny Nong Rangers. And we're going to stop them from doing anything further there. Um, McDonald's on opening day to get a crowd gave away vouchers. They turned up. At a, at a time we were, we were there all day, we seen a big crowd arrive at 10.30 in the morning, probably a couple of hundred, which McDonald's claimed was 4,000. Now we said, we know what a crowd of 3,000 looks like. This was nothing like it. Uh, and for the best part of the week, that store was ringed by 
public order support response officers. So again, your taxes paid to keep security at a McDonald's store, and I think that's atrocious. And at some point, we'll probably take it up with the police, but I think, for me, this is one of the most unsettling images of the campaign. They were out the back, they wouldn't go in the front, and McDonald's were handing out food to them at the back. So, I mean, we've got to ask the police commissioner what, what's going on here. Now, I'm not saying they got it for free, they may have paid for it, but if you're there working for you know, public order, I don't think that's a good look. Okay, so it's built, you've lost. Well, a week before opening, Planning Minister finally signed off on C126 amendments with our group had lobbied the council and the planning minister, which basically stops any sort of drive through going ahead in the Dandenong Ranges. So we stopped them at Tacoma, they cannot do this again. So that was huge. <laughs> save, save your applause because the bigger one was down there. On the morning that opened, they quietly briefed the Australian Financial Review because they keep all their news behind a paywall that the CEO of McDonald's had been moved sideways. And one of the reasons she had is because she took us on in court and spent so much money and they were losing, they were bleeding red figures in Australia. So this campaign took the scalp of the CEO of McDonald's Australia. Well done, <laughs> Kata Kramer. McDonald's don't get rid of people, they move them, so her, her move was not upwards, it wasn't sideways, it was definitely um, down. She now orders the toilet paper for most of the group. She's a logistics person now from CEO, so that's a big step downward. So going forward, just finishing up, what we have to do to re remain relevant, to keep this campaign going and hopefully inspire other communities, four things, lobby, Create a financial disaster for the Tacoma store. So make people not want to go there. And at the moment, we're counting customers. We think it's probably doing 25% to 30% of what it should be doing. So it's well down. And most times you go past there, it's empty, which is great. No one from the Dandenong Rangers is supporting it. We need to export the revolution. Not a week goes by where some other community comes and talks to us because McDonald's are doing this all the time. Um, there's one happening in Mandra in um, Western Australia at the moment. I'm seeing that as Tacoma 2.0. Exactly the same thing has happened. Council said no, they've gone ahead, we're gonna supply you jobs. Most people want this, they're using the whole thing. So we need to show McDonald's, if they do this to communities, they're gonna get another Tacoma reaction. So we need to export that. And more importantly too, we need to record our history so people can learn from this. So with the lobbying, we've been going to council meetings. We attended a cabinet meeting and got to talk to the Premier and the Planning Minister. We've been lobbying MPs and Ministers. We've attended political functions and some of our campaigners spoke in this room a couple of weeks ago to a Labor Party meeting to talk about how the VCAT laws should be changed to basically reference third party interests. We attend events like this, I've done others, the Chifley Institute, Oak Tree. We've been creating opinion pieces for uh, newspapers, magazines, etc. So there's still interest there. We're the go-to guys when it comes to protesting. Create a fi financial disaster for the store. Well, that's to maintain a presence on site. So we regularly protest there. Highlight its lack of success. So we do that via social media, talk to the, talk to the general media. We're not allowing McDonald's to buy our community. So they're trying to give vouchers to our netball clubs and our football clubs and we're saying no. We look after our community, not you. We're working with food networks across the hill to promote businesses. There's a food frontier group about healthy eating. And one of the ones I'm really excited about is something we're working on called the Burger Off Trail, where we're actually going to promote a website, brochures, and have a smartphone app. So if anybody comes into the Dandenong Ranges and they say, I want a burger, it'll take them to where they can get a healthy burger. It'll take them basically anywhere but McDonald's. <laughs> so again, that will be used to inflict a little bit of financial pain against them. In terms of exporting the revolution, we need to speak to other communities and become the gold standards. And I thank uh, Community Australia for giving us the opportunity to do this today. Talking to you is what it's all about, getting our message out there. We're talking to students. <coughs> I've spoken to primary schools. In a couple of weeks I'm doing year 10s and year 12s at various secondary schools. We've been lecturing at universities on PR courses, on marketing courses. So again, they're asking us, how did we do it? What did we do It was different? 
So that's important. And to record our <coughs> excuse me, to record our history, Tim's producing a film which will basically tell the story from go to woe, which is great. And you're all part of it today, so do they wave, Tim? Yeah, wave. Tim's at the yeah, he's there. So there you go. Your your bit of history. Um, the State Library contacted us some time ago and they asked could they do a digital archive of our website so it would be protected for, if the website ever comes down, at least there'll be a digital archive in the State Library. So, you know, there are going to be generations in hundreds of years that will read about this campaign, which is great. Some of the ladies in the campaign are putting together a photo book because we've had some great photographers. Where's John Weeks over there? John Weeks is one of the photographers that found out for our campaign. Thank you, John. Beautiful work. Glenn Stevenson is another, and there's another one, I forget his name, but there's been great people that have just come out and just helped us out. Um, we had a gentleman from the, uh, come up to us and said he wants to create a young adult fiction novel based on our campaign. So we're going to have year 12s reading about this in their English courses, we hope. Um, the other day I was contacted by, I'm getting the rind up here, I'm just last slide, uh, I was contacted by a textbook, manu uh, textbook publisher in Brisbane, they're going to use parts of our campaign in a year eight book on civics, which is great. And the Museum for Australian Democracy at Eureka uh, is curating a campaign, uh, curating an exhibition about our campaign later in the year. So we really feel it's great, we've seen it to be a, text root, a textbook grassroots campaign. I thank you for your time. I've got an hour. I'm just looking now. I have 58 minutes and 42 seconds. So thank you very much. And from Tacoma, my people here, thank you too. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gary, and, and your whole team from Tacoma. I think you've just given us uh, all so much inspiration, especially when things are looking like they're really stacked against us at, at times. Now, our finishing time was 4.30 for, to move into drinks, so we're not going to have time for questions, but I am sure that you've got plenty to talk about after that. So go and enjoy yourselves. Talk to some of these to people from Tacoma. You'll see them from their distinctive free T-shirts. You, you can't miss them. Red T-shirts. So go and enjoy drinks, and we'll see you back here at 9.30 in the morning. Thank you.